Today on The Hookup, I'm gonna show you how to make this Amazon Echo enabled homeschool e-learning tracker. Not only will it help your kids stay on track during this strange time, but it's a fun project to do with them to pass a little bit of time and maybe get them more interested in electronics. My daughter is in first grade and transitioning her into online learning while my wife and I transitioned into online teaching has been a little bit rough for everyone. I designed this timer to help her visualize her school day and motivate her to fill up the dots each day. At the beginning of each school day, the lights start off, and then throughout the day, all she has to say is things like, Alexa, start reading, or Alexa, start math, and it will start the appropriate length countdown timer using the LEDs for that particular subject. Once the countdown reaches zero, it activates two lights corresponding to that subject. By the end of the day, the goal is to have all the lights turned on, and that's when she knows that her schoolwork is complete. I've made this project as user-friendly as possible, so even though I've posted the source code for anyone to use and modify, you won't need any coding knowledge or previous electronics experience to get up and running. So it's a perfect first project to get going on the DIY Internet of Things. To make this project, I used a Node MCU microcontroller, WS2812 addressable LEDs, male to female jumper wires, some scrap wood, masking tape, and hot glue. I've got Amazon links down in the description for the exact parts I use, which will cost around $28. But you actually get enough stuff to make three of these devices. So if you want to make one for each of your kids or gift a set of parts to your friends, you can. For tools, I used a drill, a 3 8 inch drill bit, a hot glue gun, and a saw. Let's get started. I made the stand out of some scrap pine 1x2 that I had in the garage, but almost any scrap wood will work as long as it's at least 8 inches long. You'll drill 10 3 8 inch holes 5 eighths of an inch apart on center. If you'd rather, you can just eyeball the measurement by laying out your LED strip on the front of the wood block and then marking in between the solder pad feet of the LEDs. The trick to drilling well-aligned holes is to start with a small drill bit and make sure it's in the exact right location. Then use that small hole as a pilot hole for the larger drill bit. You should make a point to keep your drill as level as possible so that the holes go straight through. If you have clamps available, drilling through your board into another piece of scrap wood will help prevent tear out on the back of the board. The next step is to program the microcontroller. To do this, you'll need to download two files from the links in the description, classtimer.bin and nodemcu pyflasher.exe. Plug your nodemcu into your computer's USB port and start nodemcu pyflasher. Select QIO for the flash mode, Yes to erase all flash memory, and then click Browse to locate the classtimer.bin file. Autoselect usually works really well to find your Node MCU's COM port, assuming you don't have any other microcontrollers plugged into your computer via USB. Last, click on Flash Node MCU. Assuming everything goes well, you'll see a bunch of things pop up in the console, ending with a message that says Firmware successfully flashed, unplug, replug, or reset device to switch back to normal boot mode. But before doing that, get out one of your female to female jumper wires and connect one end to the pin marked D5 and the other end to the pin marked GND. Then press the small button on the Node MCU labeled RST and that will cause your Node MCU to enter the Wi-Fi config mode where you can connect directly to it to input your Wi-Fi, SSID, and password. If you ever need to change your settings, you'll go through these same steps. Using a phone, a tablet, or a laptop, connect to the SSID called School Timer Setup and most of the time you'll be redirected to a captive portal page to enter your Wi-Fi information. If you're using a phone, you might need to turn off cellular data in order to access the page. And if you aren't automatically redirected, you can manually navigate to the IP address 192.168.4.1 in your web browser to get the configuration menu. Once you're in the menu, go ahead and disconnect the jumper wire from D5 and ground, because leaving it connected after submitting your Wi-Fi information will clear the information and you'll just need to do it again. On the configuration screen, you'll enter your Wi-Fi, SSID, and password. If you have multiple Wi-Fi networks, you'll need to connect it to the same network that your Amazon Echo devices are connected to. Then, you have the option of entering custom names for each of the five subjects. I recommend just calling them Subject 1 through Subject 5, because we're going to set their real names using Echo Routines anyways. Once you've finished, press Save, and then press the RST button on your Node MCU again. Next, let's hook up the LEDs to your Node MCU. Using female to male jumper wires, hook up one wire from the pin labeled VIN to the red wire on your LEDs. 
Connect pin D2 on the Node MCU to the middle pin on your LEDs, and then the GND pin on your Node MCU to the white wire on your LEDs. These LED strips come with an extra white and extra red wire for doing something called power injection, but you're not going to need to use them. If everything's gone well so far, your LEDs should light up in groups of two. Now we just need to add them to your Echo app. On your phone, open up the Alexa app and click on Devices, then Add Devices, and then scroll all the way down to Other. After 45 seconds, a message will come up saying that no new devices are found, and I have no idea why this happens. Go ahead and click Add Devices, scroll down to Other again, and then after an additional 45 seconds, it will find five new devices corresponding to the names that you entered on the configuration screen. After that, you can test out each of your new devices. To clear all the LEDs, you just need to set any of the subjects to 99%. To make sure that the timer is functioning, set one of your subjects to 1%, which starts a one minute countdown timer that when finished will activate the LEDs corresponding to that specific subject. The rest of the configuration is done via routines. Here's an example of how I set up mine. Go to routines, then new routine. I'm gonna call mine math. Click on when this happens and then voice and enter a command that you wanna say to your device. For me, I'm gonna program the command start math and I want the Echo to respond with the online platforms that my daughter can work on during this time. So I'm gonna to go to Add Action, and then Alexa Says, and then type in your response, and then select the device you speak to. Last, I wanna set a 20 minute timer for the math subject, which on my device happens to be subject two. So I'll go to Add Action, Smart Home, Lights, Subject Two, and then select Brightness and drag the slider to the desired number of minutes, 20 in my case. Repeat this process to set up each of your subjects. If at any time you'd like to change the time or the subject for a specific device, just edit the routine in the Echo app. If you have a subject that doesn't necessarily have a time limit associated with it, instead of setting a brightness, you can just set it to off. For these subjects, instead of saying Alexa start science, I've configured them to respond to Alexa done with science. The last routine to set up is the one that clears the previous day's lights. To do this, create a new routine, but this time instead of selecting voice, select schedule. Pick the time that you'd like the lights to reset and then hit repeat every day. Then click on add action, smart home, lights, and pick one of your subjects. And then select brightness and move the slider down to 99%. You only need to do this for one subject and it doesn't matter which one you choose. All right, let's put it all together. Grab some tape and put the LED strip on the back of your wooden block, aligning the holes with each LED. Next, get out your hot glue gun and pump about a quarter inch of hot glue into each hole. This will help diffuse the LED light and also will hold the strip in place. On the back, gently fold the wires over and glue them into place on the back of your wooden block. Put a dab of hot glue on the metal part of your Node MCU and glue it to the back of your wood block as well. I recommend doing this with the USB cable already plugged in so that you'll know you'll have clearance to plug it in later. The last step is to decorate. On mine, the space on the front is the perfect size for two rows of masking tape. So I put a strip on the top and then a strip on the bottom over the LED holes. Then have your son or daughter decorate the top strip with pictures for each subject or a design and then peel back the bottom strip. Since it's masking tape, you can change this as many times as you want without too much work. If you think this is a great project and you're thinking about doing it for yourself, give it a thumbs up and share it on social media with your friends and leave a comment to let me know how it worked out for you. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They offer full-featured PCB services, including PCB production, all types of assembly, and PCB design services. I've been using them to design some plug-and-play versions of my most popular projects, and I've been super happy with both the quality and the service. New customers are eligible for $5 off their first order, which makes your first order of 10 circuit boards basically free. Check out the link down in the description. Also, thank you to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you're looking for other small projects to do with your kids during this time at home, I've got a teacher friend who's just starting a YouTube channel teaching science using stuff you've probably got laying around the house. Link to that channel is down in the description as well. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.